Good morning, Geyer Springs. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. Whether in person or online, we are so glad that you are here. Hey, today we're starting with a special treat. This morning, we are gonna enjoy music from our Sunshine Kids and our Children's Choir. Get ready, you're gonna hit the like button by the time we're done this morning. I'm Tracy Kraft, and I am one of the music leaders on Wednesday nights upstairs with our first through fourth graders. Each Wednesday, we start our time by singing together, and our music focuses on concepts from the Word of God, on the character and the glory of God, and lots of fun and upbeat scripture memory songs so that we are hiding God's Word in our hearts and carrying it with us as we go. Since it's Christmas, we of course wanted to focus on Christ-centered carols. So please enjoy as the kids share some of those with you today. Hey, didn't those kids do a great job? We're thankful for our kids and for our leaders who help lead our children's choirs every single week. Again, we're glad you're here. Let's get ready to worship. All right, well, good morning. So glad that you're here with us this morning. Uh, it is Sunday. I don't know if you know that. This is, this is Sunday, a new week. And so as we're walking in, we're kind of getting settled in. On Sunday, we start the week off with worship, and you're in the right place. We're going to do that this morning. We're going to fix our hearts and our attention to Jesus. But i got a few announcements for you before we get there. Hey, if you're new to us, 
like this is new to you. You kind of walked in. Somehow you ended up in the venue, and this is your first time here. Here's what we do. Uh, we want to connect with you. We want to help you with next steps. And so all you got to do is get out your cell phone and text DISCOVER to 94000. Text DISCOVER to 94000. You'll get some, some info. We want to just follow up with that. Hey, if you're a regular attender, if this is family, this is your church, all you need to do is text GSFBC. We'll help you uh, get registered and kind of help you with some announcements. Hey, also, I don't know if you know this, we have an app. Did y'all know this? We've got an app. It's awesome. In fact, two weeks ago, I downloaded it, and I'm like, man, this is great. It's got everything you need from your newsletter to, uh, to groups to what's coming up. And so here's what you need to do. Get out your cell phone right now. You all got them if it's a smartphone, and download the app. It's GSFBC. And it's going to give you all the things you need to know. So, like, it's Christmas time. we got different services coming up. All the times that those are going on, when our offices are open and when they're closed, announcements coming up in the new year. It's almost the new year. It's almost 2022. And so you've already got a lot on your mind, a lot on your plate. So let the app do it for you. That way you look like an amazing person to your spouse. You're like, yeah, I knew all that information. Get it from the app, GSFBC. Download it today. And then last thing, hey. As we're kind of still trickling in, this is crazy. I've not seen this before, but this is crazy. Like at 9.30, there was no one here, and then like it just kind of keeps trickling in. And so um, I don't know what that's about, but maybe we need, to, we need to do something. But as you're coming in and you get settled in, we're going to be talking about peace today. So maybe we didn't have such a peaceful morning, or maybe we define peace in a lot of different ways from a worldly way. Today, we're going to focus in on what God's Word says about peace. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to honor the reading of God's word today. This is going to come out of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And Paul's the writer of this underneath the Holy Spirit. He's going he's gonna to lead us into this understanding of what peace is. And he says this. He says, rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. Let's do it again. Rejoice. Why do I make you do it twice? Paul says it twice. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand, meaning that the Lord is at work. Whether you see it or believe it or not, the Lord is at work today. And even in this room, he's going to be at work in your life. And here's what we got to do. we got to let him do the work so that we can see the working power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Why? Because we don't want to be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, letting your request be made known to the only one that can handle that, that is God. And let the, here's the word, peace. Everybody say peace. Come on, one more time, peace. And let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, and this is the person, in Christ Jesus. And so we come this morning in Christ Jesus, seeking peace, the person, so that we can face whatever comes this season. And that's why we're here this morning. So let's seek after Jesus this morning. Let's ask for his presence to be here. Let's ask for his power to be here. Let's ask that we might be moved through his word. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that right now you are guarding our hearts and our mind. Jesus, thank you for that. That even in the middle of chaos and agendas and seasons that are busy, you usher in peace a peace that goes well beyond our understanding and what our minds could be, and you give it to us supernaturally. And so, God, what we have to do right now is we gotta, we got to come straight after you. So whatever distractions we may have, whatever thoughts may be in our mind right now, would you move those aside and would you let us see you? Spirit, would you draw us to you? Jesus, would you move today? God, would you do a work in our lives that when we leave here, everyone would know what we're about, and that's through you and the peace that you bring. And so, God, we give you this time, and we thank you for it, and it's in your name. Everybody said, amen. Let's worship.
It is a Merry Christmas. You may be seated. We sing songs in Christmas time, and it is a beautiful time of year. We, we sing and remind it of a wonderful uh, Christmas hymn, and then we kind of replay it a little differently. And I love getting to see and hear kind of a new perspective when it comes to Christmas. It is certainly a Merry Christmas. It's a time where we gather friends and we gather family and we decorate our homes and we bake and we have parties and we engage everyone. It's a joyous time until it's not. You know, sometimes uh, we aren't very thoughtful of those who may be among us that Christmas is not a very joyful time for them. Every year here at Gower Springs, we're very thoughtful, trying to be thoughtful, of those who may struggle with Christmas because Christmas looks a little different for you and your family this year than it did the year before. And it could be it's different because you've lost a family member or you've lost a friend. It could be different because a family member or friend has been deployed militarily. It could be that maybe you're going through a very difficult season, even a divorce. Something is different around the holidays for you this year. And we're talking about peace today, and we're very thoughtful of the truth that God brings us peace through his son, Jesus. But when we sing of peace and we're thoughtful about peace over the Christmas season, it may feel different for you. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you with a couple of scriptures that you would be reminded that even though it may be hard for you this year, Jesus is available, he is knowledgeable, and he has peace for you in the midst of a difficult season. You know, the scripture says in Psalm, 1, Psalm 34, verse 18, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears towards their cry. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out from all of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Psalm 147.3 says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. This last couple of weeks ago, I was reading through the book of Exodus with some other men in our church, and, and through that, I was reminded of a really incredible truth that I've had the opportunity to share with others. And here's just a nugget. You know, when we read scripture on our own, usually God has intending, is intending for us to share that scripture with somebody else. And I've had the opportunity to share this with a few people. Some of you may be even in this room, but this is Exodus chapter 2. And this is Moses telling the story of the people who were enslaved and then set free in the Exodus experience. And it says this, Exodus chapter 2, verse 25, the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God and God heard their groaning. And he remembered the covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God saw the people of Israel and God knew. Sometimes we just need to be aware that God knows. God knows what's going through your heart and your head right now. God knows the plight that you're in. God knows the difficulties that maybe this Christmas season brings. God is fully aware. And in his awareness, he just wants to remind you of his love and his care for you. That he is there to comfort you and he is there to bring you peace. And so today, if your Christmas looks a little different, we, uh, we have these little ornaments that we'd like to give everyone who, uh, whose Christmas looks a little different this year. These are available out in the, the hallway to the right as you exit on the Christmas trees. Just grab one of those. That's for you to be reminded of God's peace for you as you work through maybe a difficult time. So with that in mind, let's pray together this morning. Father, we are just so very thoughtful of your truth and your word that, Lord, you, you know us. You know our situation. You not only know us, but, Father, you hear us, and you're very kind to us. In your mercy, Father, you are available to us. And so in our pain, in our struggle, maybe Christmas is very difficult this year. And, and if it's not difficult for one of us, maybe it's difficult for a friend around us. And maybe this morning they or Maybe we in the room need to be reminded that you are the author and perfecter of our faith. That you are the prince of peace. That, Father, you bring comfort and care for those who hurt. 
Scripture reminds us that you bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. And so, Father, today, may we, in the spirit of Christmas, in the spirit that you come to bring us life, that, Father, you are available to continually bring us healing in the pains of life. Father, we are grateful for your love and your care for us. May we be thoughtful of it this Christmas season. May we be thoughtful of those around us who may struggle this season, that, Lord, we would be the voice of peace. And Father, in all these things, we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you guys go ahead and stand with me? from 
Dear God, we thank you for this time. God, that we had to come together as a group of believers and worship you. God, help us never take this time for granted. The reality is a lot of places in the world are getting persecuted for doing this right here. God, but we're doing it freely. God, and we take it for granted so many times. So God, would you help us not waste this time? God, help us not give up what people are not giving up for in persecution. God, may everything that we think, say, and do glorify and point back to you, God. May you be magnified in every aspect of our lives, God. I pray that you be with Tyler. God, give him wisdom and knowledge, God. Um, let the words come out of his mouth, not be his, but yours, God. Speak to him and speak through him, God. We love you so much. In the name we to pray. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Well, good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. There we go. My name is uh, Tyler. I'm one of the worship pastors here. I do feel a little uncomfortable, just as you do, that I don't have a guitar with me right now. Uh, I'm not going to play the guitar and preach the word at the same time, even though we do that every week. I mean, I want to give it up for this uh, worship team. I have the mic right now. I don't normally get to do this, but we have an incredible group of musicians. We've got a tech team that I, I don't even know if that thing up there has a name. I call it the cave uh, but they are, you guys don't even see them. They're up in the cave every week making this service happen. We have some incredible connection uh, members and team members out there that are serving you guys as you come in. Can we just give them a hand this morning and thank them? It is uh, it's such a joy and a privilege each and every week uh, to get to serve alongside them. And uh, this morning, we are actually kicking off our Christmas series. We're going to do a little two-week Christmas series focusing on searching for peace. And uh, before I get into our text and, and we get rolling this morning, I just want to make a special note and reminder this morning that if you love Little Debbie Christmas trees as much as I do, you can get them on your way out of the room this morning. They're going to be in the back of the room. And so just a little, little treat this morning uh, as we leave. So I'll try not to be too long-winded uh, because I don't, does anybody else relate to Christmas tree, Little Debbie Christmas tree? That's my weakness. I don't know if anybody else relates, but I can go through a whole box of them. So, uh, hey, we're kicking off this Christmas series. And as we get into this Christmas series this morning, I was kind of thinking as I was preparing, I love uh, during the Christmas season, I love like the nostalgic things, right? Like I can think back to, you know, Kristen and I, we have a two-year-old right now and we're creating all these like, traditions, if you will, with her as she's growing up and all the things that we do with her. But I can think back to even when I was a kid and the different things that we would do as a family every year at Christmas. And one of those uh, traditions for us was on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, the TV was on all day. So we got, we got TV time all day, all right? And it had to be on a specific channel though, TBS. Some of you guys know where I'm going now. What, what movie? A Christmas Story, right? A Christmas Story in our house was on repeat 24-7, just like it was on TBS. And so amidst all the gifts and all the hanging out with family, me and my brother fighting over the new toy, whatever we were doing, you would catch like parts of the movie all day and basically watch the whole thing probably a couple of times. But one scene that I love in that movie, and there's a lot of scenes that are very memorable, but one is right before Christmas morning, right? Like it describes uh, just what Christmas is like for a lot of us in so many ways, right? There's this scene of the living room with all the decorations and the lights and the tree and the presents under the tree. And it's just quiet, right? Like there's just this anticipation that something's about to happen, right? So Ralphie and Randy, they're laying in bed. I mean, just like you kids in the room this morning, you can't wait to get up and to go down and open all the gifts, right? So they get up, they run down there, and this moment that was at one time serene and quiet and calm, what happens? It turns into chaos. Like, I mean, gifts are being ripped open, 
There's wrapping paper everywhere. I can, I can still remember Randy's little toy blimp, right, that he ends up curled with in the middle of the floor. And when, when you get to the end of all the gift wrapping, what's really hilarious to me, and it, it's just this scene, this image of Randy, right? He's laying in the middle of the floor, and what's he doing? He's sleeping. Like he's got his toy blimp, and he's got all this wrapping paper, and there's chaos everywhere. Like it's just a mess. And Randy is just sitting in the middle of all that mess, sleeping. And I think for us this morning, I think that's a really incredible picture for our life and the experiences that we have in our life. I think a lot of times our life at one moment seems calm and peaceful, if you will. And then the next moment, it's a total mess. And what do we want to do when that mess comes? We just want, we want to find peace again. Like we want to experience what Randy experienced in the middle of that floor and all that wrapping paper and all that mess. And he's just calmly, peacefully sleeping. And I think for all of us in the room this morning, even as Pastor Jason prayed over us earlier, you know, in the midst of all the chaos and the mess in life and the hurt and the disappointment and the confusion and the list can go on and on and on. The truth is we are all searching for peace. Like even if you didn't wake up this morning and roll out of bed and say, I'm going to look for peace today. We're all looking for peace in our life. But also, as we are all looking for peace in our life, it can look different for each one of us. We all come into the room this morning with different situations, different problems, different moments in our life that we're trying to figure out. And so peace can look different for each one of us this morning. What I want to challenge us in, though, this morning is ultimately we are all running and searching for the same peace. Now, before we get into what I mean by that, I want to give us just a basic definition for peace. So this will be on the screen behind me. Let's work off this basic definition. Wholeness, this is what peace is. Wholeness, to be complete to have resources sufficient to one's needs, freedom from disturbance, all right? Wholeness, to be complete, to have everything we need, and to just be free from disturbance. That's what we're searching for when we say peace. So if this is what we're searching for, the fact that we are searching for it in the first place means what? We don't have it. Why don't we have it? Well, we have, what do we have instead of peace? Anxiety? tension, we're lacking something, we're stressed out, there's not freedom from disturbance, everything is disturbing, we have all these needs in front of us, and what are the things in our life that brings those tensions and anxieties? Maybe for you this morning, it's family or friends or a relationship that just isn't working out right now. Maybe it's a situation at your job. Um, Maybe you're even thinking big picture and you're like, man, I'm just sick of all the war and people fighting with each other. Maybe, maybe there's just discontentment in your heart for politics or social media or wherever else we find tension and stress and worry. So here's, here's my question for you and for me this morning is maybe we're not searching for the right kind of peace in our life. And the questions that I want to ask us this morning is, what peace, if we aren't searching for the right peace at times in our life, what peace does God desire for me and for you to experience in our life? And then maybe even a secondary question to that is, what peace am I settling for? And here's what I want to challenge us this morning, and and Adam mentioned this even in his welcome this morning, is I want us to focus and turn our perspective this morning from what can bring me peace to who can bring me peace. And so this morning, if you've got a copy of God's Word, we're going to be in the book of Luke. So you can go ahead and turn to Luke. And as you're turning there, uh, today's message is going to kind of be split up into two parts. So the first part, we're going to look at the Christmas story together. The birth of Jesus. 
a story that probably for most of us in the room this morning is incredibly familiar. But I want us to look at this story, and I want us to ask ourselves this question as we look at this story of the birth of Christ. What kind of peace does Jesus bring to earth, to us? Now, before we get to our text for today, I want us to think for a moment about the tension. Let's take ourselves back into biblical times, okay? A couple of thousand, thousand years ago, all right? Right before Jesus is born, what's going on in the world around us, right? So back in biblical times, there's all these prophets that, that prophesy about the coming Messiah. God speaks through his prophets all throughout the Old Testament and prophesies about, hey, I'm going to send a Savior. I am going to send a Messiah to come and rescue my people. But before we get into the birth account of Christ, there's tension. God has been silent. There's about a 400-year period of silence before Jesus comes where people are waiting, they're confused, there's a tension, they're, they're lacking, and they're wondering, when is this Messiah, this Savior, coming? So we pick up in the book of Luke this morning, and in Luke chapter 1, I'm going to kind of give you just a synopsis before we get into Luke chapter 2. But in Luke chapter 1, many of you have heard this story before about Jesus. An angel appears to Mary and Joseph, t tells Mary, hey, you're going to have a baby. Um, it's not going to be Joseph's. You're not going to have just any baby. You're going to have what? The son of the most high. Just imagine if you're a teenage girl hearing that. You are going to have a baby, and he is the son of God the son of the most high. Just think about the tension and the anxiety Mary and Joseph were experiencing in that moment. And then when we, as we pick up in Luke 2, because of the census of Caesar Augustus, Mary and Joseph, they're led to the town of Bethlehem. And that's where we find Jesus being born in a manger, the story that we know. And we're going to pick up our story this morning in Luke 2 verse 8. Now, as we jump into this scripture this morning, as we look at just a few verses of the story of the birth of Christ, I want to focus on two foundational truths about the peace that Jesus came to bring. So let's pick up together in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So Jesus was born, this incredible moment in history happens. The Savior of the world has arrived. And where does our attention get turned to? A manger and some shepherds in a field. Why is this significant for us? Why is it so important that Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of the Most High, was born in a manger and why does our attention first get pulled to these shepherds in a field? Here's our first found, foundational truth about God's peace. God's peace comes through humility. It's the first thing we've got to understand about God's peace. It steps in through humility. You see, the peace that God brought down to earth through Jesus was done in a way that is opposite the way the world expected it. I mean, even if you and I were to, to transport our bodies back into biblical times before the birth of Christ, how would we expect the Son of God to come into the world? Through power, wealth, status? But no, he didn't choose a castle or a mansion or some crazy thing. He chose a lowly, dirty manger. And then he also chose for the good news this incredible message that, hey, all the years of waiting, the Savior has arrived. Who does he go to first? Shepherds. Now, I don't know if there's any shepherds in the room. All right, do we have any shepherds? I don't think we do. Chris is a shepherd. <laughs> Y'all get that? Okay. If you don't, you can go meet Chris. He's a great shepherd. All right. I'm going to talk for a minute about biblical times shepherds and what they were like. Okay, 
the occupation of a shepherd, it wasn't a highly sought out position. Okay, like you didn't grow up as a kid necessarily if you wanted to achieve wealth and status and power, you didn't grow up and say, hey, I want to be a shepherd one day, okay? Matter of fact, shepherds were considered to be liars and thieves. And obviously, they're hanging out with sheep all day. They probably don't smell great. They didn't have the greatest moral compass. And then to top, top it all off, their testimony, so a shepherd's testimony was actually inadmissible in a court of law. So God chooses to bring the good news that the Savior of the world had come to a bunch of guys whose testimony was inadmissible in a court of law. God's great story, his good news, comes to some of the most untrusted people in society. Just think about that for a moment. The good news of Jesus that you and I have heard about, we're sitting in this room today, and the good news of Jesus has traveled all the way to us on the other side of the world, started with some untrusting shepherds. I mean, even think about it for you, like, if, would you have believed them if they came and told you the good news of Jesus? And when we think about God's peace coming through humility, Right at the beginning of Luke's account of this birth story of Jesus, there's, there's this uh, a phrase that Pastor Tim Keller ca- came up with called the upside down kingdom. And immediately we see God establishing this upside down kingdom on earth. And what I mean by that is the economy of God's kingdom is upside down to what the world sees as valuable. Where we would see power and wealth and status as valuable on earth. In God's kingdom, meekness, lowness, humility, that's what's exalted and valued most. You see, this marks the beginning of Jesus' life here on earth. And it would be a theme, if you know anything about Jesus today, if you've read anything in scripture about him, it would be a theme about his life that he came in humility to seek and save and serve. So when God's peace comes in humility, through humility, it's important for us to remember this morning that peace is not absent of conflict, right? I think so often in our life when we search for peace, we try to run from conflict. I mean, that's, that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to say, listen, I've got this issue or this problem, and we tend to run from our problems. Like we try to run from when we feel broken inside over something, we try, I, I got to get this feeling away from me as quickly as possible. But when God's peace comes, when Jesus comes, it runs toward brokenness. It runs towards the problems. And not only does it run towards it, when we're seeking it, it's required. Like brokenness and humility are required of us. And so I want to look in Luke 1. There's this incredible song of praise that Mary proclaims at the end of Luke chapter 1. And she alludes to this in her song of praise to the Lord. It says this in Luke 1 verse 50, uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 51. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones. And what does he do? He exalts those of humble estate. So God flips everything upside down when Jesus comes. He says, listen, your, your path to finding true peace, your path to experiencing what the Savior of the world has to offer is not through being proud, it's not through power, it's not through wealth, it's through making yourself as low as you can. He flips it. So often we try to do everything we can to avoid brokenness, our problems, and God wants to embrace it in humility this morning. So what what happens as we continue in Luke 2? So the angels come to the shepherds, we pick up in verse 9. 
It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. Now, fear, the word fear, is, it's kind of subjective, right? Like, what might be fearful or scary or terrifying for me may not be so much for you, right? Like, I, I, I'd hate heights. Like, I cannot stand heights. Um, I, I will ride a roller coaster, but I, I took a group of uh, junior and high school kids uh, about, that's probably about 10 years ago. We went to the Grand Canyon. Has anybody been to the Grand Canyon? I mean, literally, uh, I, I guess I had this, like, image of what the Grand Canyon was in my mind growing up, that there was, like, all this safety railing and all this stuff, like, around it, and you're totally fine, and you just look. No, it is like loose gravel. Like, it is literally standing on the edge of the abyss, and it's just loose gravel. And so here I am, and, and if you know anything about me or if, if we get to know each other, I am a worst-case scenario, like, hardcore. Like, I am just processing, like, every bad thing that could ever happen in the world, period. Um, I'm a lot of fun to hang out with. Uh, but I'm, I'm just freaking out the whole time because I got all these junior high, high school kids that are just playing and kicking rocks and I'm just like, dude, I'm going to get fired because <laughs> we're somebody's falling off the edge here and it's going to be traumatic. But, you know, that's terrifying for me. That may not be so much for you, right? Like fear is subjective. Um, you might, maybe you're scared of snakes or spiders or fill in the blank with something that's just really terrifying to you. This is a different, this is a more intense kind of fear that you experience when you experience God's presence and when his glory shows up. When the glory of the Lord is shining, there is an awe and a reverence that we experience when God steps in. And so in verse 10, what does the angel of the Lord say to the shepherds? They're standing here. Obviously, they're a little freaked out because there's angels in front of them. What does the angel say? Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, don't miss this, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. I want to go back to verse 11 there. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, who? A Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It's important for us to, to catch that because Jesus is the Savior. He is the Messiah that had been prophesied about for years and years and years and years. And he had come. He was God's promised servant. He had come to save God's people. But it's also important for us to understand that he is the Savior, but he is also Christ the Lord. Which the Lord translates here in the original language to Yahweh. Signifying that Jesus was not only just the Savior of the world, he was fully God. He, he possessed God's full, sovereign, authoritative nature. So even at birth, even as a tiny baby, I'm assuming tiny, Jesus was both a savior for the world and he was God. So this news comes to these shepherds. Hey, listen, I've got this great news and we, I'm, the angel says, I'm coming and I'm telling you about this news. And what, is, what, is the, what happens next in verse 13? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. In other words, a bunch of angels of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. You see, the word glory, which may be unfamiliar for some of us in the room, or maybe you've heard that word a lot, and you're unsure of what, what does that word glory mean when the angel says glory to God in the highest? The word glory actually translates in the Greek to the word doxa. And in the Greek, this means ultimate beauty, magnificence, and then even in the Old Testament context of the word glory, 
It means weighty. So what does that mean for God's glory to be weighty? What this meant was that when God and his glory shows up, it has the power to move and displace things out of the way. It's weighty. When God's glory comes in, it moves everything else out of the way. So when the angels, going back to that verse, say, glory to God in the highest, what they are proclaiming to these shepherds and to the world is that there is a beauty, there is a magnificence that displaces all other things now. There is a beauty in this baby of Jesus that compares to nothing else, and it lessens the beauty of everything else around it. So we understand that God's peace comes through humility. But secondly, in the angel's worship of Jesus, we learn that God's glory and our peace are inseparable. The coming of Jesus to earth is God's greatest display of his glory. By bringing peace on earth through Jesus, God is glorified and we can experience true peace with him. You see, it's impossible for us in our life to truly experience the peace that God wants us to experience and to not care about his glory. Like we must be passionate about God's glory and his worship so that we can experience the true peace that he has called us to experience. So God's peace comes through humility and God's glory and our peace go hand in hand. These are two things that I believe we can learn out of this story about the birth of Christ. So it's one thing to understand these two foundational truths about God's peace. It's another thing for us to begin to ask the question, okay, how does that apply to my life? You see, what's interesting is when Jesus came into the world, going back into biblical times, when he came into the world, there was a guy, and we read about him in the birth story. There was this guy named Caesar Augustus, right? He was the ruler over the empire there. He was leading. And what's crazy is when Jesus came, the Roman Senate had actually given him the name Augustus in 27 BC to honor his defeat and annexation of Egypt. So a little history lesson for you, right? So Caesar Augustus got his name because he had come and he had conquered. And what did he do? Although he was harsh and unrelenting, and the peace that he brought was more of a submissive peace, he was a master administrator who restored order to the empire after there had been two decades of civil war. So why is that important? It's important because he was known before Jesus came and was born that they, there was this Roman's golden age was named the Pax Romana. And, and they gave Caesar Augustus all the credit for bringing this Roman peace that lasted for over 200 years. So why is that important for us to, to, to see in the story? It's because a lot of times for us, we will turn our attention to a ruler, to a leader, to another person to bring us peace. We place the expectations on their shoulder, say, hey, I need you to bring me peace. But what I believe Luke is doing for us here is he's contrasting the peace that the people were experiencing under Augustus with a true peace that we had never seen before. It wasn't an external peace, it was an internal peace that Jesus came to bring. And here's the problem that we have so often, is that we have a peace that we want and we miss the peace that we need. We think, man, if, if all these elements in my life would just line up, man, if I could just have this, or if I could have that, or if this relationship, or this job, or this, this thing I'm experiencing would just, th then everything would be at peace and I'd be okay. But that's not really the peace that we need. You see, here's the truth for us this morning. Before we can experience peace anywhere else in our life, 
we have to understand that the most basic need we have is to have peace with God. Whatever else you think you need peace from this morning, at, at your core, the most basic need that you have is to have peace with God. So if this is true for us today, if this is our most basic need, if we understand that God's peace comes through humility, humility, it requires brokenness, and we understand that God's glory and our peace are, go hand in hand together, and it's our most basic need to experience this peace, then how do we get it? How do we find this peace with God? I want to give us three things as we close this morning and how we find peace and how we experience the peace that Jesus came to bring. The first is this. Peace is not earned by our works or our traditions. I want to look at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says this. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God, what? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, so often we get this backwards. We think, man, if I work, if I, if I, I can earn this peace in my life. And what happens is we end up taking one of two false positions when it comes to God's peace. On one hand, we say this, we say, I can fix my own problems. Like, I don't know if you can relate to me in that, but I'm real good at that. I, I will sit and map out in my mind, if I do these couple of things here, oh, it'll make me feel better. It'll give me some peace, right? And sometimes we might not even list it out. We may just do it. We may say, man, if I come to church, like you guys are here this morning, if I, if I come to church every week, if I go to my Sunday school class, if I go to my life group, if I step outside and I'm nice to my neighbors, right, then I'll have peace with God. And we get it backwards. And we say, hey, I can fix my own problems. The other way sometimes is we get prideful on the flip side and we say, I can fix everyone else's problems, right? And we get on, well, you know, the, the social media site not to be mentioned this morning. We get on there and we share all of our feelings about what we feel and what we think is right. And, and we try to fix everyone else. But here's the problem when we try to fix our own problems and create our own peace, and when we try to fix everyone else's problems and create their peace, what are we doing? We're playing God. Like we are trying to be God. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you're a terrible God. Like I'm a terrible God. I do not have the ability to bring my own peace. You do not have the ability to do that, to bring it into somebody else's life. That's what Romans 5.1 says. It says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of everything that he has done. That's why he came to earth. Receiving God's peace is supernatural. It's something that we cannot conjure up on our own. So peace is not earned by our works or our traditions. Secondly, peace is found through receiving and through believing. Romans 15 verse 13 says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Believing, so that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So the peace that we, we can experience that God has for us this morning is found through receiving it, not earning it, and through believing in it. And so this morning, if you're looking for peace, if you're wondering how can I experience this peace with God, you just have to receive it and believe it. And thirdly, our last point this morning, peace with God precedes all other peace. If you truly want to experience peace in your life, if you truly want to experience peace, peace around the dinner table with your family at Christmas, if you truly want to experience peace with your friends or your neighbors or your coworkers or those you're in class with or in school with, if you truly want to experience peace on earth, it begins and ends with experiencing peace with God. That's our deepest need this morning.
And so as we close this morning, I'm going to ask the band to come back up. And I want to I look at one more verse of scripture this morning in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Paul writes this. He says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which you indeed were called in one body and be thankful. You see, when we truly experience peace with God through Jesus, and we let Jesus rule in our hearts, not just as our Savior, not just as our, I don't want to go to hell card, but He is actually the Lord of our life, the Lord of our heart. Then we can experience God's presence, and we can experience His peace in an incredible way. And the way we do that this morning is simply by coming in humility, coming in brokenness to say, listen, I don't have to be all put together. I don't have to say the right things. I don't have to have everything figured out. I just come as I am in the midst of my brokenness, the the thoughts that I have that no one else knows about, the sin in my life that I think is hidden, but it's not. We come in that. And we can experience the peace that God has for our life. And when we experience that, that unlocks the peace that we seek to have with the world around us. And we are able to give God glory in the way he has called us to. So I want to ask this morning if you'd bow your heads and close your eyes this morning. And just to sit in that truth for a moment this morning. This is an incredibly busy season It's a time of year where you're just running from one thing to the next. I just want to ask this morning, maybe you just need to sit this morning. Maybe you just need to think for a moment on the goodness, the grace, and the mercy that Jesus as a baby came to bring to this earth. Maybe this morning you are, maybe your life is just tense right now. Maybe you're just constantly stressed. Maybe you're constantly worried. Maybe you're constantly just, there's just tension everywhere. And I would ask this morning, how do you need to just pause for a moment and come and step into God's presence in humility? And to take the mask off, to lower your pride, to lower your guard, and to say, God, I just want you to have my heart today. I don't know what's best for me, but you do. And how this morning can you experience the peace that God has for you and allow it to become a catalyst for every other part of your life. Because God has called us this morning to walk in his peace, not our own. And so just know this morning that there's nothing you can do to earn anything. It's just receiving and believing this morning that Jesus came as a baby to bring peace on earth and to restore our broken relationship with God. God, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for the truth that your word brings into our life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that as we can look at the story of the birth of Christ this morning, God, a story that for some of us has become so familiar that maybe it's lost some of the power for us. God, I pray that we would be reminded today of the incredible truth, the incredible moment in history that happened when you stepped down onto earth. Lord, you changed the course of history. Lord, you brought restoration and redemption and wholeness 
in a way that nothing else can. So Lord, we thank you this morning that you are a God that saves, that you are a God that restores. And Lord, that even in our busyness and even in our struggle to just sit and to be calm and to listen, Lord, you meet us right where we are. So God, I pray for every heart in the room this morning. I pray with, I, I pray with my brothers and sisters today, God, that whatever thing we're struggling with, whatever thing we're struggling of letting go of and trusting you in, God, that we would be empowered by your spirit and be reminded that you care and you love us in that way, God. So Lord, I just pray this morning that we would turn our hearts to you, that we would quit searching for peace in every other place but the one place that we can truly find it, and that's in you and through your son. So Lord, we just, we want to continue to pray this morning. And Lord, we just want to continue to trust in who you are.
Amen. Thank you so much for being with us this morning in worship. As we kind of bring closure, I want to get you excited about a couple of things. Um, I don't know if you know this, but God is moving right now in our church. And this is something we get really excited about. Like last week, Claudia, when you got baptized, awesome. Today we had three more get baptized this morning. We had uh, Tori, Reese, and Eric. So we had a second grader, an 11th grader, and an adult male get baptized this morning in the worship center. And, and this is what, what happens. Like when the Holy Spirit becomes like evident and clearly working in a person's life and Jesus is Savior and Lord, everything changes. And so this morning as we got to celebrate through baptism, we know that there's some, some more responses that are coming this way as well. And so last week we had the Lord's Supper and we had the ordinance of baptism. And we know that there's still many out there that are still wrestling with that. If you need a next step, if you need somebody to talk to, please come find us at the end of the service. We want to have those conversations. And then also, last Sunday, we called people to prayer. We know that if God is going to move in the life of our church, we need to ask him to do that. We need to beg him to do that, right? 400 years of silence, and then Emmanuel comes. We heard from Jason. Uh, there's just this yearning and groaning, God Help us, save us, move here. What happens? God remembers, he knows, he acts. And so even now, if we want to see a sweeping move of God in our families, at our schools, in your work, in this place where we come to worship, we got to ask for it. And last week, what an awesome night. We saw this whole room just full of families just praying, praying over the kids for salvation, praying over the future of their, of their family, praying over for protection, and, and you name it. Like, it was a great night. And so here's what I want us to, to kind of, like, think about. As we could kind of put it into context of today's sermon, the shepherds were out doing their job, right? And then the angel of the Lord shows up and gives them good news, and they're able to respond to that. What had happened if God chose to move and then a shepherd didn't, like, show up for work that day? Like, he just kind of slept in, just kind of movement of whatever, like kind of here and now, just kind of following his own thing, and then just misses the whole thing. I want to warn us, I want to beg us, I want to be proactive in saying, hey, if God's going to use Geyer Springs, let's show up, let's be present, let's be humble and posture, and when he moves, let's be like the shepherds, let's go and let's tell. And so that's our next step for today. Right now we heard a great message about peace, let's embrace that. Let's step in with Jesus, and as we go out from here, let us be the peace that other people see in Christ Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit move us to our next step. All right, so thank you so much for being here today. We look forward to having you in groups. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us online at Geyer Springs today. We want to connect with you. If you're a guest, we invite you to text DISCOVER to 94000. You'll get a text back from us with a link to information about who we are and how we can connect with you. If you're a regular attender, we invite you to text GSFBC to 94000. You can give us prayer requests, stay connected with what's happening at Geyer Springs. Our mission at Geyer Springs is to glorify God by making disciples who love God and love others. In our community ministries, we do that through school partnerships and our Upward Sports Ministry. To learn more about those, please visit gsfbc.org slash missions.